The Maple Leafs have officially punched their ticket into the postseason. We'll tell you how it happened and where the Maple Leafs sit in terms of home ice advantage going forward. It's Mike DiStefano, Dave Moore, Studio. Listen to Locked On These Podcasts, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your Locked On Maple Leafs, your daily podcast on the Toronto Maple Leafs, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome into the March 28th edition of the Lockdown Leafs Podcast, your one-stop shop for all things Leafs. I'm your host, Mike DiStefano from TSN 1050 Toronto Radio, also known as Al's brother from TSN's Overdrive and TSN 1050's Leafs Lunch. Joining me, it's my co-host Dave Morissuti from Sportsnet, also a writer for the NHLPA. Locked on Leafs, a daily Maple Leaf centric podcast. Be sure to subscribe for free wherever you get your podcast from. Also, check us out on YouTube. It's Locked on Leafs on YouTube. We got new content coming out each and every day, uh, Monday through Friday, five videos and podcasts a week. If it's your first time, thank you very much. Hopefully, you enjoy it. If you do, we would ask that you uh, kind of hit the like button, subscribe to us. So the playoffs are coming, buddy. They're coming fast and furious, and things are really starting to ramp up. And the Maple Leafs have officially, David, clinched a playoff spot. We can see the X beside their name in the standings. They have clinched a playoff spot. Thank you. Thank you to the homies up north. The Ottawa Senators laid a beatdown on the on the uh, Florida Panthers tonight in Ottawa. And uh, because of that loss by Florida, Toronto officially Clinching, buddy. How does it make you feel? Oh, it's nice. I mean, it's it's the one so it's check mark, right? Yeah, it's just uh, a formality. All yeah, time. Like, no one was worried. worried. No one was worried, but it's yeah. like, oh, nice. It's you know? yeah, it's nice to finally just have that you no, know, that one thing that you have off your mind. But <laughs> it's funny because like the Leafs put out on their Twitter account, like job isn't finished. And I'm like, yeah, no kidding. Yeah. I didn't really do any. You just had to just wait and see if Ottawa would win. And uh, that's not the most important one right now, right? That's not like this, this was, again, for they're talking in the in the broad, like during games. Oh, uh, you know, when they face a fair, the Tampa Bay Lightning in the first round, it's like there was never even any doubt that they were going to. No. We've no. been talking about who they're playing round one since November. Like we knew the Leafs were going to get there. Yeah, absolutely. Like you said, it's just very much a formality. And I actually like that, that they tweeted that out, that uh, the job's not done. Because, I mean, it's right. It's 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 not done. I mean, they've, they've done this. They've had this celebration, you know, seven years in a row now. So uh, until you get through a round and hopefully a couple rounds and, God forbid, hoist Lord Stanley's mug, yeah, the job's not done. Because uh, that's that would be considered finishing the job for Toronto this season. Um, we'll get to uh, Leafs and Tampa and kind of where they sit in terms of what's left to play for. Because now that the you know the playoffs are officially clinched, I guess home ice is the only thing that the team is still looking to play for. Can't win the division, can't win the President's Trophy. They can still win home ice at the very least, get that other check mark for the regular season. Um, but I just really quickly want to touch on Florida before we get into that. Because what a fall from grace the the Panthers have had. Like, this is a team that legitimately won the President's Trophy a year ago. They had, like, 118 points or 120. I think it's like 120-something points that they had a season ago. And now they might miss out on the playoffs. Like, literally, from President's Trophy to possibly out of the playoffs. They currently sit three points back of Pittsburgh for that final wild card spot with no games um, in hand. They both have played the same amount of games, 74. So, it's really going to be a, a tough go for Florida the rest of the way. And if they miss out, man, what a fall from grace. Yeah, it's – it's we and we kind of maybe saw it coming in a way just because they had they had no cap space. They went all in on, on last year, and they put themselves in this position. That's what happens when you're so aggressive in one season and – I mean, Florida was just a cap disaster with the way everything was done. So, yeah, I don't think I've ever like have we ever seen such a drop off from a team like I mean, obviously Montreal going from being in the Stanley Cup final to then picking 
know, being the bottom. lottery winner. <laughs> but like the Florida Panthers were legitimately a playoff team last year. Like there was no ifs, ands, or buts about that. Um, I, I did they- see, I did see see a statistic, and this is clearly in hindsight, but you know, maybe we should have seen it coming a little bit. But there was a statistic I saw from last season where you look at a lot of their numbers and a lot of like their goals scored and like their goal differential, they padded the numbers against non-playoff teams and kind of struggled and just like squeaked out wins against playoff teams. So maybe we, that was due to kind of, you know, come down to earth a little bit, but I don't think anyone expected to come down to earth where they missed the playoffs. In t- well, actually I shouldn't say no one expected it. It was my bold prediction at the, at the beginning of the year, but, Again, that was supposed to be a bold prediction, and it actually came to fruition. So, uh, well, not yet, actually. They still can make it. Like, there's still, what, uh, eight games they have left? So they still can make it, but three points back and, and no games in hand, it does become just a tad more difficult, especially when you're going up against a team that has a guy by the name of Sidney Crosby uh, on the other side. So, yeah, yeah we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll keep track of what's going on there in the wild card race. But let's get back to the team here, man, with Toronto, because we know what's going to happen for them, right? They've officially clinched the playoffs, um, so they're going to be in the dance. But the question is, will they clinch home ice? Well, they're pretty darn close to doing that, as is. They've now grown to a seven-point lead on the Tampa Bay Lightning with a game in hand. And they do play Tampa one time. It's the second-last game of the season. So I would imagine home ice, barring any type of, legitimate crumble from the Maple Leafs, like an 18 wheeler type of thing the rest of the way, it'll probably be decided by the time game 81 comes. So that game might not even factor into anything whatsoever. Uh, But with the Leafs seven point lead up on Tampa, looking like they could end up claiming first uh, claiming second place rather, which would be home ice advantage. You know why this is a massive advantage for the Toronto Maple Leafs, Dave? Have you seen, Tampa's road record. They're under 500. They They're, are like, they're brutal on the road. Brutal. So 25, seven and five at home, which also matches the Toronto Maple Leafs road rec- home record as well. So both these two teams play really well on the road. Tampa Bay lightning road record 17, 19 and one. They just haven't been able to play on the road at all this season. It's, it's kind of wild to, uh, to see that, to be quite honest with you, a team that's been just a beacon of consistency and have been able to just be the juggernauts of the NHL for so long, struggling to win on the road. And since the NHL All-Star break, Dave, have been honestly one of the bottom third teams in the National Hockey League. Like everyone's looking and saying, oh, they've lost four straight games, like currently on a four-game losing streak. They only have, they have a 481 win percentage since the All-Star break. So this has been happening Since early February, Dave, in that time, only seven victories, seven victories in, uh, in, or sorry, in the last 21 games, 10 victories since the All-Star break. And they've allowed the fourth most goals against with 88 goals against in the games, since 26 games since the All-Star break. Crazy. Not what you expect to see at the Tampa Bay Lightning, but very encouraging if you are a Maple Leafs fan. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, look, and Tampa didn't like their biggest move was going to get Tanner Janot, and he's not, he's spending more time in the penalty box than he is doing anything else with the Tampa Bay Lightning right now. Like, they didn't go out and make the guy, the guy had five goals when they traded for him. What did they expect him to be? Well, I guess they expect him to punch the puck into the net, you know? If you watch that game against Boston, like, I didn't think they were going to stop calling penalties in that game. That's how bad it was. Um, good game. Let's say that. That's he good hasn't game. even scored a goal since he got to Tampa either. Like, like nada. And they gave up what first, second, third, fourth, and fifth round pick. First, spread second, across third, third fourth, year. fifth, and Cal Foot in the deal. And, and Cal Foot, who was their first round pick a few years ago. So yeah, uh, crazy, crazy to give up for a guy who's yet to put the puck in the back of the net. It's not what they brought him in to do. But you would think at some point he'd be able to to get one. I mean, shoot, even Alex Kerfoot is scoring goals right now. So, I mean, it could happen, guys. It could happen. But, um, yeah, I, 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 I don't want to sit here and say, like, it's probably it for Tampa in terms of I think they've hit that wall that we've all kind of talked about for a while. 
But if you are a Lightning fan, like this is certainly – there is some concerning hockey that's being played since the All-Star break. It's not a small sample size anymore. We're looking at two months now where the Lightning just haven't been able to put things together and uh, the playoffs are just three weeks away at this point. Yeah, and like the worst part of – like last year, like they got Nick Paul, Brandon Hagel. Like they went out and bolstered their lineup. They didn't do that this year. Like the guys that are there, they're there. They had to subtract also to make these deals work, right? R- Ryan McDonough, he's gone. Like that was that's a that was a significant loss for them. Palat. Palat. He was he like what I think is always is gonna scare you about Tampa is they've got gamers, right? They got the stamp coast points, Kucherov, Hagel, like those types of guys, even uh uh, even Anthony Sorelli, they got gamers, but are, are those guys now have to, are those, are teams now able to focus on those guys more because lower in the lineup, it's not exactly, you know, a murderous row anymore. Like it was in past years for this Tampa team. Yeah. And I mean, from a Toronto perspective, like they got guys who can stack up, stack up against them and arguably better players than, uh, than a lot of those guys in terms of talent up and down the lineup at this point. But uh, you got to play the games, obviously. You know, they, they've they taught us not to, uh, to, to judge a book by its cover because you never know. They could flip a switch at any time. The Maple Leafs have not yet figured out how to flip a switch when need be. But if they do, like if this is the year where that switch gets flip, flipped for Austin Matthews and Mitch Marner, dude, the way that – the Leafs are playing the way they played over the weekend. And then the way that the lightning are playing right now, dog, I I don't even know if this thing goes seven, this thing can end in five or six. If these trends continue for the Leafs on an upward trajectory and the lightning on a downward trajectory. If if there is one thing you just are hoping for is that the Leafs can try to find a way to end the series early. Like I'm not saying a sweep. You don't want Vasilevsky in game seven. You just don't want any part of that. Don't want any part of that whatsoever. Try to try to make the make it so that you're any like the Leafs should have won that thing in six. They actually also probably had a chance to do it in five, like with the way that series was going, how it started. So if you're if you're the Leafs, don't let this go to seven. It has not worked the last seven years. So let's 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 end that let's end that trend. Uh, this time around, you got you got if you get Tampa on the ropes, you finish them. Yeah, absolutely. Show that killer instinct that you talked about needing and wanting the the, the killer instinct that we've seen from the guys who they went out and got right. The Stanley Cup champions like a Luke Shen and a Ryan O'Reilly and, you know, Noel Chari, who's been deep into the playoffs a couple times. Show us that bringing those dudes in did change the mentality within that room and they can lead this squad. And I'm looking at Ryan O'Reilly who um, latest update is, is, you know, he's skating with the team and, and he's been shooting some pucks. He's eligible to return this week. Wednesday, I think is the first game where he is eligible to uh, still unknown as to whether or not he will play um, this week or this Wednesday rather against the Florida Panthers, but he, he is on it's on his way and we'll get, you know, uh, about half a dozen or so regular season games in to finish up to, to get himself ready to go until uh, the playoffs hit in three weeks uh, time from now. All right, Dave, we'll take uh, a quick break. And when we get back, let's play some cosign, no sign. We haven't played in a while and there's a few days off before the next game. And there's a couple of different storylines that we kind of want to touch on that we can get to uh, with uh, with this fun bit that we do usually once once a week or once every other week. So we'll get to that on the other side. But first, let me tell you guys about one of today's show sponsors. Of course, it's FanDuel. Uh, the NCAA tournament is heating up down to the Final Four, and there's no better place to get in on the action than FanDuel. It's North America's number one sports book. That's because right now FanDuel giving new customers a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's up to $1,000 back in bonus bets. If your first bet does not win, just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. And sign up today to claim your no sweat first bet. And you can wager on anything from money line to point spreads, which team's going to cut down the net, even hockey. Go ahead, goal scorers, shop props, whatever you want. 
It's all in the app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. So don't miss your shot at a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 when you join FanDuel today. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. Make every moment more with FanDuel. Welcome back into the Locked On Lease Podcast. Mike DiStefano and Dave Morissuti. Uh, we are your hosts here at the Locked On Lease Podcast. Uh, we do daily Leafs podcast so if it's your first time listening hopefully you're enjoying it uh subscribe because we got a bunch of stuff coming out and we'll be doing it every single day from here until the end of the season and even through the off season this is a 365 type of podcast so uh if you're part of leafs nation definitely you'll want to subscribe uh and be a part of this pod we also do have the discord which has been popping off of late with uh, people getting pretty excited about the playoffs. I saw when the Leafs officially clinched, there was a couple of LFGs that went into the chat in our Discord. So uh, people pretty excited in Leafs Nation that Toronto has officially clinched the uh, the playoff spot here for this upcoming season. Again, it was a formality, but the fact that they clinched is uh, is nice to see. With a lot of games in hand, too. Like, there's still nine games to go, and... Not a whole lot to play for, Dave, considering that they've got a seven-point lead with a game in hand on the next team, the only team that can threaten them when it comes to home ice advantage. That being said, Dave, because it does go into my first cosign no sign. And if you haven't watched us or listened to us play this game really quickly, the way it works, we're going to make a statement to each other. If we agree with it, we'll cosign. If we disagree, we'll no sign. So on the subject of not much to play for down the stretch. The Maple Leafs should rotate out the big boys throughout the week leading up to the final couple of games of the regular season. Selfishly, I'm going to no-sign this for two reasons. One, I'm in Tampa Bay for that second last game. Oh, it's going to be a terrible game, dude. I was hoping for you. I know. Well, we didn't exactly. It wasn't. Well, we planned this like months ago, so it was a little tough to plan that one out. So I went to a game at Amelie Arena. It was years ago, like when I was in high school. They have unbelievable. Well, there was one spot in particular. I don't know if they're throughout the entire building, but unreal Philly cheesesteak. Cosign, no sign. Dave should go get the Philly cheesesteaks. Cosign, one thousand <laughs> percent. That's not my cosign, no sign, by the way. Um, well, the, the thing is, like, I don't mind if they want to rest. If a guy is feeling the need to rest, or in a in a a game that means nothing, like especially the final game of the season, sure, I can see that. Um, you question, just, uh, yeah, because this is one that's been talked about a little bit. We're we're starting to see, you know, in the past, it, it was more so resting guys in game eighty one or eighty two mm-hmm. of the season. Now it seems like we're seeing rest come at game 74, 75, 76, 77, giving them a couple of games rest, you know, a week or two prior to the playoffs so that you're not completely rusty when you're going into it. And you actually do play the final two, three games of the season so that you don't completely miss a week of hockey. Well, and that's what the Bruins did actually the other day where they rested Bergeron, Marshawn. Like they rested those guys. So I, I have no problem if you want to give them just a random night off. But, like, the thing you have to also remember here is that the Leafs, they're not cramming a lot of games in anymore. Like, they just they played Sunday, not playing until Wednesday. That's some decent leeway time. Wednesday, they're off. Like, back-to-backs, rest them, guys. No problem with that. If you want to go two ahead. Left? Two back-to-backs left? Uh, I think one. just the one. The ne- this weekend there's a back to back, and then I think that's it for back to backs. Oh, okay, I thought maybe there's one more, but but like okay, a game against the Columbus Blue Jackets, you don't need to put out your A plus lineup, and the Columbus Blue Jackets would probably prefer if you put out the A plus lineup, but the Leafs don't have to do that. Um, so like, who so who 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 are guys that you think are you're not gonna rotate everybody? You're not gonna sit everyone, but like who do you think is sit out? worthy or or who should they sit out i would like i would sit a guy like matthews because he's been dealing with bumps and bruises along the way um i i guarantee they probably would do morgan riley again because again it seemed like that actually that game off actually helped him a little bit uh he's been he's been playing much better you got to get timothy lilligren in a game 
Um, maybe you try to get Connor Timmons in for a game. So if you sit Geo, if you mm-hmm. sit um, just like just, I don't think you need to sit everyone. Like, does Don John Tavares need a, a night off? Probably. I would say yes. You want to make sure his legs are are as fresh as possible. Um, yeah, like Matthew. Like I don't think Marner wants games off. He's he never really looks tired. But again, you have to think about the long term. You give them one or two games, I'm fine with that. But yeah, don't sit them for like the final week of the season. No, God, no, God, no. I heard no, one. I want to be smart. Yeah, I heard one person put that out on Twitter and just like you. The lot and actually Justin Bourne brought up a good point on the broadcast on Sunday and saying teams that have less rest, especially in the playoffs, actually tend to do better. Like those who have more time off in between, it's harder for them to kind of get back up to speed again. Well, that's I think goes for the argument of sitting guys out in games 74, 75, 76, as opposed yeah. to games 80, 81, 82, right? That you still get yeah, those exactly. few games to ramp back up. And, you know, get back up to full speed, ready to go for game one of the playoffs, as opposed to using, you know, the first two periods of game one to get your legs back because you missed the last week of of the regular season. So, uh, yeah, I think we'll we'll see some of those guys start to kind of take a seat. And we kind of have seen it happen with the blue line recently. I think we'll start to see it happen up front as well. All right, Dave, give me your first uh, cosign, no sign. All right. First one for me. Uh Ryan O'Reilly will find himself on the second line come playoff time. Like full-time second line role? He's going to be playing second line center with Tavares and probably Nylander, whoever is on the other side. But like full-time second line role? Yeah, I'm going to go. I'll go full-time second line. I'm going to no sign it then. Because I I think he starts on the third line. I do. I think you look at the way the lineup is kind of setting up right now. You feel like Achari's not really going to be their third line center. You probably have that as a placeholder for Ryan O'Reilly, and he'll kick back to the fourth line where him, uh, David Camp, and and Zach Aston Reese have played pretty good as a fourth line and and has been a consistent fourth line um, up until the last couple of games. So I I would imagine we'll see that kind of occur. Uh, But at points through the game, you know, situationally, I think O'Reilly could, you know, take a couple extra shifts up in the top six. So, you know, I think that he will get some time with them, but I don't think it'll be on a, an official basis like it was in that Buffalo game early in, in his tenure uh, in with the Maple Leafs. I think it'll just be kind of situational, late in games, if they're down by a goal and they need a goal or, you know, whatever it may be coming off of, uh, you know, a power player coming off a penalty kill. You know, like that. I think those will be the times where he'll be able to uh, – to get a run up in the top six somewhere, but I think he'll spend more time as a shutdown third line guy uh, and then rotate up into the top six periodically. Okay. That's fair. I, I do think they'll probably start him there on the third line. I, I wouldn't be surprised if that second line offensively or just isn't getting a lot going that they'll move. He'll be the prime candidate to get moved up. Yeah. I mean, at some point I could see it happening, but I don't see it starting that way i guess we could say but if they need some more firepower up front that is the first and most logical you know change that i think the maple Leafs do make all right uh i'll give you my next one here mitch marner will be will be will david will be top three in selkie voting this season top three you know what i'm gonna co-sign it Yes, Dave. Yes. Tell me why. I I mean, you see this. Like, you always have to think about the stats that Mitch Marner, like that Selkie players get. Like takeaways is a big one. And Mitch Marner is one of the better players in the NHL. Leads, leads the NHL. Right, sorry. Let me correct myself. He leads the NHL in takeaways. Like that doesn't happen by accident. He's that's something he is purposely doing each and every game and that should be recognized now i understand takeaways isn't the only thing that you should be basing a player off of but the fact that he's like far and away the leader like brandon hagel is second at 85 mitch marner's first at 97 Mm -hmm. i guess not even close in that regard kills penalties terrifically great penalty killer like 
the guy is just a really good two-way player, ultimately. Like, you don't think of it just because he's so offensively gifted and um, his stature, but he really, truly is. Like, he is – he's hungry. He wants to He wants to get the puck back so he can go and provide that offense. I, I, I'm with you, man. I think he does finish as a top three Selkie cannon. Probably Bergeron, it? Barkov, Mitch Marner. You think Barkov will get there again? Just out yeah. Of- okay. Yeah. I think Bergeron definitely will get there. I wasn't sure who that th- who else would be on that. It's kind of a tough one. Though. I always have a hard time with the Selkie. I always just say, who was the last year? Okay, just like put those three guys up again. <laughs> always Pretty much. seems to be like that. Pretty much. Uh, why don't we take a quick break and we come back, do your second and third and my third as well. So we got a couple more cosign, no signs that we're going to get to. But first, let's hear uh, a word from our show sponsors. Welcome back into the Lockdown Leafs podcast. Mike DiStefano and Dave Morissuti. We're playing some co-sign, no-sign, a game that we love to play here on the podcast where we make statements to each other. If we agree with it, we're going to co-sign it. If we disagree, with you, then we no-sign it and we explain why. Uh, I gave you my first two. Give me your second co-sign, no-sign, Dave. All right. Um, I know we've talked a lot about Ma- um, Matthew Nyes, if and when he's going to come to Leafs. I'm going to put that that discussion aside. We've talked enough about that. We're going to focus solely on the Frozen Four. And mm-hmm. you noted on the, I think it was the last show or the show before that, Matthew Nice hasn't exactly been lighting the lamp. He went pointless in both of the games in the NCAA playoffs. Um, I don't know how that was possible when his team won a game nine to two. I know. Four to one on the next game. And one of his line mates, Logan Cooley, had a pretty good game too. I do know that he is also doing some things in front of the net and he's giving them you know, space and all those things. But I think Matthew Nyes will bounce back and he will have a Frozen 4 to remember. Cosine? Cosine? He, he, now I listened to when his coach was uh, doing some of the media rounds and he says when the games mean the most. <laughs> Because like these games, it was almost like you knew that Minnesota was going to win. It would just kind of be like by how much. Now it's like these are these are like the the stakes are at the highest, and this is when Matthew Nyes is at his best. It's very much a uh, glass half full approach. You want to hear a glass half empty approach, though? Uh oh. These are the playoffs, yep. right? Like this this is one and done playoff hockey, and Matthew Nyes is pointless through the first two games of one and done playoff hockey through the first two rounds, we'll call them. There's a lot of that going on with uh, Toronto star power. So he fits right in with the group. I'll say yeah. that. Uh, but I think that's going to stop here. I do. I, he's, he's a very talented player. Like, and, and I don't know, I don't think he's going to, you know, come and be a, a top line or a top six contributor right away for the Maple Leafs. I don't even know if he'll, be one of their 12 guys who they throw out on a regular basis when he gets here, if he signs here. Um, But he is dominating that league. Like he is just bigger and stronger than everyone else there. And ultimately I know that the competition gets a lot tougher. Once you get into the final four, obviously it's top four teams in the nation, but they are the number one ranked team for a reason. Like that is a very talented Minnesota golden gopher squad. And, uh, you know, he's one of their best players. Him and Logan Cooley and Jimmy Snuggerud are, are just a dynamic line. I would find it very hard to see that trio have another good game and have him not hit the score sheet. So I think uh, I'll, I'll co-sign. I think he comes alive for the Frozen Four and helps his, his school win a championship. I, I do think that happens. And just to get you uh, the info on April the 6th, he at 5 o'clock, Minnesota will take on Boston University mm-hmm. PU, in the first in the semifinal. And if Minnesota were to win, the championship game will be on April 8th at 8 o'clock in Tampa. The Frozen Four is in Tampa. Which is so funny because where do the Maple Leafs play the following day? Well, the Leafs, uh, the Leafs have a have a two game. Actually, sorry, they do have another back to back. We were talking to about answer that. the question. They're in Florida, Sunrise, yes. Florida. So they're not in Tampa. They they do go to Tampa. They after. go to Tampa, but they're in the same state. There, man. 
They're in the same state, so he'll have to go too far to, uh, you know, to, to to meet up with the team. And and the way that it works, like literally, if that game ends at 9 p.m. Uh, on the eighth, by like 9:45, 9:50, he'll sign his contract as a Maple Leaf and be on a flight to join the team in Florida the next day or the day after or something like that. Like that's, that's what's going to happen. And he will play. If he, if he signs, I'm he's playing, he, he's playing the final three games. Does he play the playoffs? I don't know about that, but he definitely is going to play the final three games of the regular season just to get a look at him. Is that enough to prove that he is deserving of a playoff spot on this team? That I don't know. We'll have to wait and see what he looks like against NHL talent with NHL pace, which has been kind of the question mark with him is the word pace because he's not the quickest player. No. Um, very strong, very talented, good hands, but not the quickest type of guy. But we'll see if he can get through all that. You know, some guys can, some guys can't. But uh, he'll have three games to prove if he can or can't, and then the decision will come playoff time. But if we're just talking about the Frozen Four, yes, I will co-sign it. He'll be a beast. All right, what's your final one? Timothy Lilligren will not be in the lineup for game one of the Stanley Cup playoffs. I'm going to co-sign it because I feel like Sheldon Keefe is rolling out the guys that he thinks are going to be playing. Who I, do I you think, think that is? I think it's, it's going to be TJ Brody and Jake McCabe is going to be that top pairing. You're going to have Morgan Riley and Luke Shen, and then you're going to have Mark Giordano and Justin Hall. I think that's how it's going to go. Now, things could change. You could have a knock on wood. You don't have a serious injury, but that's that's one situation. I just don't know. I don't know if Sheldon Keefe is going to trust Timothy Lilligren in the playoffs more than he trusts all those other players I, I named. And – it's unfortunate because I think Lilligren has actually played well all season and one or two games in the last little while shouldn't throw all that away, in my opinion. But, you know, the, the team is deep on the back end for a reason. Best yeah. guy is going to play. Yeah. Yeah. Like if you asked me a month ago, I it's it's it is 100 percent, a, a, you know, a no sign <laughs> that he doesn't play. But it is increasingly looking like Sheldon Keefe is starting to settle into a defensive, um, you know, defensive package that revolves around those six guys that you just mentioned. Mentioned Brody McCabe, Riley, Jen, Geo, and Hall. If they go eleven and seven, which they have been prone to do this season, then I think Timothy Lilligren could factor into a game one uh, lineup here. But I still think they end up going with with the the veterans and the guys who play with with jam because that's ultimately kind of what this team has lacked a lot especially um defensively and you talk about a team that has jam up front it's it's the Tampa Bay Lightning right like you just feel better with um Justin Hall or or and I know people are like Justin Hall are you kidding me but you feel better about guys like Justin Hall and Luke Shen boxing out you know, guys like Tanner Janot, for example, and Corey Perry, for example, um, than you do Timothy Lilligren, who still, I think, has a bright future in the league, but just his, his plays dropped off a little bit here, and and ultimately they went out and, and they're just looking for something a little different. Are they better than Lilligren? Is Luke Shen a better player? I don't think so, but I think that Luke Shen brings a different element, and the element is is – going to kind of tie goes to that at this point. So that's why I think it could end up happening as well, where he does not play game one. And then we kind of see how things go from there. Yeah, no, for sure. Your last one, pal. All right. Uh, Michael Bunting has seen a bit of a dip in play, and I know it's uh, one that you probably are not happy with, considering where things ended last season and you wanted to be the Calder trophy winner and he was deserving, deserving and all that stuff. And I know his play has dipped lately, but I think in the playoffs, he will be one of the unsung heroes for the Leafs. Mm. And what I mean by unsung heroes, I mean like a guy we don't expect to really have the, like to be the leader in that regard. Like he's not the Matthews Marner. 
that's what I mean by unsung hero. Man, it's going to depend where he ends up. It really will. Um, like, is he a top six player? You know, first line with with Matthews and and Marners. He had second line guys. He third line, fourth line. I don't think is out of the question. Um, I just don't know where he's going to play. Uh, and and you know, how effective can he be when he's not on that top line with those guys? He hasn't proven to be super effective away from those players. Like that's that's just facts. So can he be an unsung hero? I don't think he can be, or he can be, but I don't think he will be unless he's in the top six. If he has to play a bottom six role, I don't see it happening. Um, I would have more faith in in a guy like, you know, Nola Chari scoring a big goal, or maybe a Sam Lafferty scoring a, a, a big goal. Potentially, you know, you could even see Kerfoot, who's been a playoff performer, you know, over the course of his tenure. As much as people rag on Kerfoot, he's he stepped up in the playoffs. You know, uh, Callie Earncroft could be that X factor playoff performer, like he's been the last couple of weeks here alongside Matthews and Marner. So, you know, he wouldn't be at the top of my list if I had to, you know, place a wager on a Leafs X factor. Is it possible? Sure. But I think it's likely that somebody else steps up instead. No, that's very fair. I'm just, you know, if they if they go with the line of let's say Michael Bunting, Ryan O'Reilly, and Sam Lafferty, that intrigues me a little bit. Really, I don't, I don't like that. No, no, because if you're going to put together a third line, which is why ultimately I think Bunting could end up on the second line actually, and be with Tavares and Nylander. Um... <sighs> Are you worried defensively about like? That's what it is. Like if you're if you have O'Reilly in your third line, it's because you want that to be a checking line. Mm. You're not going to put Michael Bunting on your checking line. Just not going to happen. Like I think Kerfoot, Kerfoot, O'Reilly, and Lafferty makes way more sense as a checking line. That's fair. Maybe even Kerfoot, O'Reilly, and Achari could even make a little bit of sense. No, they definitely could. Yeah. So yeah, we'll see. We shall see what happens. Uh, there's still nine games to go, though, Dave. We got one tomorrow against the Florida Panthers. So you're gonna be you're gonna be in attendance for that one, right? Yes, I will be. Yes, you will. So beautiful. So will I. We'll have to send our picks into the Discord chat, as has become tradition for people who have gone to the games. Got to send the pick. Got to do it. So uh, we'll do that. And we'll be back tomorrow to tee up that game. Lee's Panthers, they can really put a nail in the coffin of the Panthers if they can get a victory against them uh, on Wednesday because that's a team that's reeling, reeling. I mean, thank you for losing. Allowed the Leafs to, to clinch a spot here. But three points out, they can't afford many L's left on their schedule. And playing Toronto, that's a tough, uh, that's, that's a tough team. That's a tough matchup for them considering what happened a week ago. But that should be a good one. So we'll come back. We'll tee that game for you guys tomorrow. But that'll do it for us here today on the podcast. I'd like to thank you all for listening and supporting the show. You can subscribe to the Locked On These Podcasts on all podcasts and platforms to receive daily Leafs content. Uh, follow myself on Twitter at Mickey underscore Canuck. Follow Dave at D underscore Morrisuti. We'll be back with another episode for you guys tomorrow. But until then, keep it locked right here on Locked On Leafs.